All right, uh, for more on the uh, insight on this, I'm now joined by uh, political analyst uh, Igor Khokhlov here. Uh, thank you for joining us on the program today. Um, Timoshenko has called on her supporters not to give up. She wants them to continue the fight uh, against what she says the authoritarian regime. Uh, how do you think the situation can develop from here? Uh, you know, first of all, we have to <clears throat> remember that Yulia Timoshenko has proved to be a tough uh, political fighter as uh, he has been a major player at the Ukrainian political scenes, um, scene since uh, 90s. And actually her support helped uh, Viktor Yushchenko back seven years ago uh, get into power. So even, uh, being in jail, even, even being jailed, she remains a um, serious political player. Although her, of course, um, being put behind bars significantly diminishes her political ability to fight and to maybe even return into politics. Well, we did, we did see certainly a lot of uh, supporters outside the courthouse today when the verdict was announced. So we, we saw pretty widespread sc uh, scuffles uh, with the police there. You're saying that she still has a big backing, although it could dwindle uh, during the time she's in prison. If I may, officials from the uh, European Commission they say that um, there'll be another outcome of the case, or they hope there'll be another outcome of the case, uh, following Timoshenko's decision to appeal. Um, can the sentence be changed, do you think? I know it's pretty hard to say. I guess uh, there's no hope the sentence is um, going to be changed. Um, um, <clears throat> given the um, situation in the Ukrainian politics, because uh, Viktor Yanukovych uh, for long has seen Yulia Timoshenko as his major opponent, and actually Yulia Timoshenko was the person uh, who didn't let him win the presidential election in 2004 when Viktor Yushchenko became the, uh, the president. So the, the whole story has nothing to do with uh, economics or uh, criminal situation. So, so is there, is there some, I'm sorry, is there some sort of a political motivation then? Because a lot of, the, a lot of her supporters uh, in Kiev uh, were, were crying there were political motives behind this verdict. Is, is, is that what you're suggesting here? Absolutely. There's political motives behind the verdict and it has nothing to do with economics or uh, with um, um, uh, crime as we usually understand it, basically. Now, the European Parliament's uh, largest party has uh, condemned today's uh, verdict. Uh, what lies ahead, do you think, for Ukraine's relations with the EU? You know, actually, Ukraine tries to uh, maneuver between Russia, its large um, northern neighbor, and European Union. And we have to know, as Russia pipes gas through the Ukraine, the relation between Russia and Ukraine um, actually have developed in the context of those gas deals and paid bills and different kind of conflicts. In this way, uh, Kiev all, all, always tries to maneuver between Russia and European Union, and we have seen countless uh, gas wars where well, yeah, European I mean, yeah, yeah, consumers... You, you bring me to my next point. You, you talk about the countless gas wars. It tends to come around this time of the year. Uh, do, do you think uh, now because of this uh, we could see uh, Ukraine use this case to once again review its gas agreements with Russia? Could you see another gas war erupting between the two? Uh, Absolutely, absolutely. I think that Kiev is preparing for <clears throat> uh, changing those uh, gas deals and gas agreements. We know that economic situation in the Ukraine is not very good, and money um, that uh, Ukraine uh, gets from Russia for transiting gas, for piping gas through its pipelines built back in the Soviet years, is an important source of cash flow for the Ukrainian budget. But also we have to understand that the situation in the market is changing. Russia is, be, is building um, pipelines that bypass Ukraine and will be able to pipe uh, gas into Europe, uh, avoiding Ukraine and Belarus. Also, there are a few major projects of piping gas from uh, the south regions of Eurasia into European Union and also the market of liquefied gas uh, coming from uh, the <clears throat> era from the Persian Gulf is also developing rapidly. So in this case I think um, a Kiev will not be able uh, to use uh, gas agreements and pressure onto European customers as a powerful uh, lever as it uh, right, so, did so, in the past. So you, you, you are foreseeing a, a possible uh, another gas war here between uh, Ukraine and Russia. As you suggest, they're going to be reviewing their gas contracts with Russia. Uh, political analyst Igor Hokolov, I wish I had more time. I don't, but thank you for coming on.